this is disgusting. I'm going to clean up. Today is the first day of our van build, and to be honest, I'm a little nervous. I've never used power tools before, and on top of that, somehow our van is stuck on the side of a mountain. No, 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 no. We're stuck. We're stuck? Yeah. Uh. Good thing my wrist isn't broken anymore. Yeah. This is definitely not the situation we had in mind for our demolition or our first day on the van build, but you know, sometimes you just gotta roll with what life gives you. So I guess the first step is to make our van as light as possible, AKA tear everything out. And hopefully we can get Odie out of this mess. There you go. Okay, how do you use one of these things? We get Odie out of the mud. And we got some firewood, hopefully. All right, attack that water damage. So you see this? This is why we had to do this. <laughs> we should probably have masks on, babe. We don't have any of those, though. If we weren't stuck on a hill and we could go get supplies, <laughs> this would be a lot easier. <laughs> In this moment, I felt like I was watching our van life dream slowly slide down the mountain. Our van build was off to a tough start, but we were determined to get Odie out. We tried gravel, we tried deflating the tires, we enlisted the local handyman, Fabi, we bought snow chains and a winch, but every failed attempt brought us closer to the ravine below. We are on our way. Bobby just came back and he said he had somebody here to help get the van out. We're running down now. Van life lesson number one, never underestimate the kindness of strangers. Sometimes it takes a village. Sometimes you ask for help. Sometimes you can't do it on your own. We decided to do our van conversion in this donkey pen in southern Spain because we thought it would be easier than building on the street below our old apartment in Berlin during a cold and rainy German winter. And now we're right back where we started. Oh my gosh, that was a little too stressful. What a relief. Holy Oh my God, Blue. Those guys are amazing. I've never owned something like this big before. You can't just like fix it. Yeah, so out of our realm. I love you. I'm so proud of you. I thought he was gonna die and then it would just all be over our whole dream. The next day started the way nearly every day would on the mountain, by feeding the two donkeys, Myrtle and Nushnush, and working from dawn till dusk on the van build. Turns out, demolition is a great way to learn how to use power tools for the first time, because there's not really much you can mess up. We wanted a clean slate so that the off-grid van conversion we were undertaking would last for years to come. But first, we'd need to tackle the massive rust problem by removing the entire old interior of the van, so we could patch the leaky windows and repaint everything to protect the metal.
So now that he's all cleaned up, let me introduce you to our Van Odi, which by the way is short for Odysseus. He's a 38 year old Mercedes 307D Sprinter van with rear wheel drive, a diesel engine, and a top speed of 90 kilometers per hour. I know, really fast. Oh, and he has a knack for getting stuck. We wanted an old van because we really like the look of those old Sprinters and they are way cheaper than the newer ones. Plus, we decided to convert our van into an off-grid camper entirely on our own so that we could learn as much as possible. I mean, there are so many skills when you do a full van conversion, and a lot of those would come in super handy when we build our own self-sustaining off-grid home one day. Or at least that's our 10-year plan. Yeah, I think we used up already half of the stuff, so one more. What a day. That was really fun. I like working on the van with you. Yesterday. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Taking the tape up is so satisfying. It's so amazing. I won't do it all. You should get some of this joy. Ow! Oh! Oh, <laughs> oh you bumped your head. Oh. Ow! Oh. Oof. The hand life stuff is difficult. <laughs> Let's try that again. Um, our mission today is to patch all of the holes inside this van. We have a bunch of holes. Some were from rust, some were from the people before us. So you just cut them in the floor. 
Um, we treated the van with a rust solution and then rust paint. And now we are finally ready for today, which is going to be using a bunch of different products to seal up the holes completely. Yesterday there was sun and there was rain Beauty and the mundane And as the startled our eyes We let go of disguise It's right the heart Not really And now there's something in the air And a sparkly shimmer Alright, this one's not working. Alright. Oh, that one's much better. Right? Okay, so hopefully that works a little bit better. Oh man, it's all sticky. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess gone whole arm in this. <laughs> oh. This stuff is f***ing blue. I'm like, this got covered in the sticky stuff. This is disgusting. I'm going to clean up. You deal with this. Bye. I love you. But like, I don't want to be stuck in this. Yeah, go wash quick. Okay. Alright. I'm doing the next part. No filming. Uh, How are you, handsome? Uh, oh, you got the next one on? Uh-huh. Everything is done. I had like a bit of a rash. I really had to scrub it to get it off. Mm -hmm. But it's, I think it's off all the way. Mm -hmm. How's it going? Everything is done. Were you able to do that top corner better? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. It's still like a little droopy, but I think that's just like what this stuff is. <coughs> it's really toxic in here. Let's get out. So this is actually the only window that works in our whole van. Lou's window is fine. It doesn't leak, but you can't unroll it. And then the seven windows back there, three of them we know leak, and the rest of them look like their seals are all really old and kind of like dry. And so we are gonna take all of the windows out today, reseal them with this like special caulk that Lou got, and then we're gonna build window frames around them so when we drive they don't fall out. So that's the plan today figure out the windows and we are excited to introduce you to another member of the crew. This is Alfie. In a way, Alfie made van life possible. He wasn't our dog, but he always knew when I was feeling down or exhausted, when to stay close and when to beg for a walk in the mountains. I always wanted a dog growing up and then to have Alfie unexpectedly stroll into our life changed the entire experience of the van build. We'd throw pine cones on our lunch break and watch as he charged down and back up the hill. His hilarious relationship with the donkeys kept us constantly laughing. And on top of that remote mountain in the middle of nowhere, he helped me feel safe. Sometimes I wish I could go back to that moment before we removed those three windows and warn us to check the weather forecast first. It took most of the day to figure out how to get those windows out with the limited tools we had. Before we could put them back in though, we had to sand the metal down to remove all the rust and then treat that whole area with a few coats of rust neutralizer, just like we'd done in the interior of the van. But by then, it was already too late. To the other window. Dana, our blue sky is gone. Is it rainy? Yeah, come take a look at this. Oh gosh, no. If it rains and we have no windows. <laughs> we have to put tape in like plastic then. Work is canceled because of rain. And everything we did today has been undone. Well, we still got the windows out. Yeah, right before the rain. Okay, so it is going to rain for 10 days. Look at this, it says snow, ice to rain, rain, thunder. Well, this is a disaster. Yeah. Oh man, babe, look at the window. There's so much water in our van. So this is when things shift from fun van conversion to let's get this project done before Odie fills with water. 
The weather forecast now showed over a month of torrential downpours and gale force winds, and without windows, OD didn't stand a chance. Van life lesson number two. Some things are out of your control and life is a lot easier when you stop trying to fight them. We tried to make the most of our month of rain by focusing all of our attention on a commercial project that ended up paying for the entire van conversion. But the best feeling of all came when the sun returned and we continued with the van build right where we left off, fixing those stupid windows. Still coming in here. There's a drop there. So inside the window itself is leaking. I think, yeah, I think the water's like coming in here and then it's somehow coming down and then it must funnel. I honestly think that we're like one dry day and one bead of sealant away from like being pretty much watertight. <laughs> like, to not have water coming through here is like the biggest win ever. Cause this window leaks so much. And at least they're on in the right direction now. So our windows are double paned and the water comes in through this gap. So we just have to break it apart and then seal this okay. nice and tight. Yeah. And then hopefully our issue will be fixed. Good job! These are gonna be the ugliest windows ever. I know, but who cares? Woo -hoo! You got it? Mm -hmm. Ah. And it closes. How's it looking? Water tight. There's nothing coming in like it was before. No? No. Dousing it. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> First cut, and we didn't even Damn. have to do any alterations. So heavy. Yeah. See Ow. Like that? Ow, I just pinched my finger. Oh. Ow. Ouchie. Ow. So. So remember, you only have to fill things halfway because it expands.
You want to do the next one? No, you can do them all. Oh, cool. This is the fun part. Uh, a lot of work to get here. That's pretty good, I have to say. Oh, what a relief. Take a walk on it. We're finally building. Yeah. Feels really good. Huh. It's fun. I'm learning how to use power tools. is in and done. Now we just need to start this section up here. Fan life lesson number three. Donkeys eat wood and anything else they can get their teeth on. So make sure to put all your supplies away at the end of the day. We really came to cherish this routine during our van build. Waking up each morning to feed Myrtle and Nush Nush and working together all day as a team. Before long, the ceiling was done and the walls of our new home took shape. In the afternoons, I'd cook us lunch while Lou stayed back to make sure that the donkeys didn't eat all of our supplies. like a home. Still messy, but like the van life experience has begun, which is really exciting. And this is a ton of work, so it feels like a huge part of the build is behind us and we're like getting to the fun stuff, like painting and building the kitchen and putting in the bed and all that good stuff that makes it truly feel like a home. So yeah, big project done and a lot more to come. One summer. Lou painted his whole house. This is how you paint. According to Lou. Just a little plus sign. Not too thick. Nice and thin. Got it. I said for painting in the dark, we did pretty well. Today we are gonna try to put in the kitchen. Other people when they make their van might make a whole plan and sketch it all out, but we're kinda just going rogue and it's a small enough space that we're gonna try to just figure it out. We brought down the fridge, the gas hob, and the sink. And so we're gonna kinda use that as our guide, those measurements. We have a water filtration system that we know we're gonna have to fit underneath the sink, so we need to make room for that. And then the main thing is like, do we have enough room for the cabinets to open and not hit the future bed? and also leave room for this bathroom that we're debating, <laughs> right? Yeah. So kind of like a, a visual puzzle of sorts is what this afternoon is gonna be. Van life lesson number four. Take the time to measure twice and cut once. The little details will make a huge difference years from now. Wake up early with the sun because every hour without rain is a gift. Work late into the night and the moon will keep you company. Soon the van conversion will be done and you'll be basking in the glory of what you've built. Looking out onto the ocean from the comfort of your own bed and it will all be worth it, I promise. Yeah, I can't believe we're making a door today. It's yeah, gonna be a unique door. Mm -hmm. Sliding door. There we go. Dun 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 dun! Oh! Look at that! Look at that! 
That is pretty good. I like really like what this wall did to the kitchen. Yeah. It makes this like its own space. So very private, but. <laughs> Lesson number five, never stop learning. We had zero experience going into the plumbing section of the van build. Somehow we were able to connect a 110 liter water tank to a pump, accumulator, and a Cuba water filter. I can't show you how it works yet though, because we would need electricity for that. And boy, was that a hard thing to figure out. Honestly, I did my fair share of work during this van build, but when it came to electricity, that one I put entirely on Lou. He did hours of research designing our off-grade power system, and turns out, like plumbing, installing the electrical components was the relatively easy part. Unlike plumbing, though, if you mess things up, there are serious consequences. Now this is our female connector. Our system was based around three Sunflare CIGS solar panels. Panel one, panel two, and panel three, all ready to go. We covered them in industrial strength 3M double-sided tape and stuck them to the top of the van. Though even this part proved tricky. Not at all straight. Next, we wired the two larger panels together in parallel and sent the smaller one to its own charge controller. The two charge controllers ran into a 160 amp hour lithium battery, as well as a 12 volt fuse panel and a 1500 watt inverter. This is like Lou's pride and joy, the power plant that he built. Today we are going to put in shelves under our sink. And then we are going to put in the floor temporarily. Shelf number two. There you go. Okay, locked and loaded. Oh. That was my last battery. So I guess I that's it for tonight. Hey, darling. <laughs> can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five. City life. Hey, darling. We could get out of We are like days away, babe. It looks so good. Around, wanna it's see so it now. Pack up our bags and get Not in that car. Leave a little note and we'll drive real far. Get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life I wanna make it count Come on now and take my hand Darling. I love the way to sleep.
bathroom door 2.0. Yeah, we tried to make one out of wood, but it's just too tight. Babe, this is like so thin. Well, it's really pretty. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Looks great. Ta-da! And the bathroom curtain. <laughs> <laughs> Not a door, but... But at least it's something. It is blackout. Ta-da! <laughs> no! <laughs> Van life lesson number six. A self-built van conversion is never done, and that's okay. Once we finished installing our new bed and packed up all of our belongings, we had to say goodbye to Alfie and the donkeys. Our time in the mountains was over, but the van build wasn't quite done yet. Every morning, we'd unload our supplies and keep building, and in the evenings, pack it back into the front of the van. I sewed us door covers and blackout curtains while Lou tinkered with the electrics. I'll never forget the day we finally got the water oh. pump working. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Little things, right? Oh, oh don't cry. It's gonna be so nice to have water. The van was getting a little hard. <laughs> but we got gas today and water and our lights are gonna work now. Weeks later, we found our own little paradise on a secluded beach near Gibraltar where Lou rewired our lights and added in switches. In a parking lot in Peniche, Portugal, we added a vent above our kitchen, which has been a total game changer. In all honesty, we have never stopped tinkering with this van. In fact, this year we changed two things that have radically improved our quality of life. After Lou suffered a severe back injury, we finally switched the terrible mattress we had started with for a thin mattress topper and also installed stronger plywood boards as a base. Our sleep now is incredible. Next, Lou built us a standing desk, which means we finally have a comfortable place to edit these videos. One of the most empowering parts of this entire van conversion is the fact that now, when something isn't working, we feel confident enough to fix the problem ourselves. Odie may never be perfect, but he's a beautiful home for us. Thanks so much for sticking it out with us on this wild van conversion journey. This van build was one of the hardest and most beautiful experiences of our entire life and we feel so lucky to get to share these moments with you. I hope you have a beautiful day and if you want to see more of how the whole van build turned out, here's a link to our van tour. See you later!